Ladies and gentlemen, before you, you may just see a box. It sits there humbly, squarely, brownly, cardboardly. But to us, this box represents more. It actually represents some of the great ideas that you guys may have had and could have become a reality, but didn't. Also, to us, it represents one idea that did. Let us explain. Now, in the glistening sun of last summer, with my hair overgrown and my face substantially more youthful than it is today, this box, in its crisper, slightly newer form, started its journey with us on what became one of the most exhilarating, interesting, educational, but at times painful and miserable and cold and sometimes wet experience of both of our lives. Now, this box, it's seen it all. It's met photographers, it's met suppliers, manufacturers, shipping agents. It's met other boxes. It's also met the world's least politically correct embroiderer. <laughs> it's also met park benches in the beautiful London sun and some very, very glamorous models. It even came with us on our first UK-wide marketing tour. And on that tour, on our very first day of trading, this humble box became part of the architecture of our first ever HQ. So it's been there, it's been there all the way, and that's why it is with us today. This happens to be the alleyway of a hall of residence on our first ever trip. Indeed. So, we set about set it, uh, setting up a business. And, but what did the world look like many, so, many months ago? Many months ago, the world did not look like such a fun place. COVID was rife. We were jumping in and out of lockdowns. And by the way, we'd like to thank this new variant for keeping our talk so relevant uh, at the moment. <laughs> the business world was incredibly uncertain and universities were effectively shut. So not a fantastic time, as I'm sure you'll agree, to start a fashion business in, with a focus on the university market. But as you might have guessed with us being here today, uh, we, we did anyway. <laughs> now, we as human beings are wedded, and actually it's the contention of our talk today, to this notion of the perfect time. The perfect time to do anything. The perfect time to start. And this manifests in, in all different ways. The perfect time to get married. I'll only get married when I'm a certain age. Or I'll only have a certain amount of kids with only a certain salary. Or the perfect time to ask that girl out you've always wanted to ask out at the perfect party. Or the perfect time to start an essay. Not today when you're a bit tired, but maybe a, maybe a bit later on. What we discovered when we were butting heads and building this idea with sharing ideas that often were terrible and sometimes brilliant and a lot of ideas that were just in between is that this idea of the perfect time is a complete fallacy. There is no such thing as the perfect moment. And what we discovered was the opposite. Actually, it's in those imperfect moments that some of the most resilient ideas can thrive. So, in our incredibly imperfect circumstances, what was the idea? Well, we both had an interest in fashion, in the way that humans can portray a part of their identity through their clothing. I had studied in the United States, and something that had struck me whilst I was there was the relationship, the incredibly strong relationship between young people and American university fashion. But what struck me even more was on my return to the UK, the relationship between young people here and that, their relationship with American university uh, fashion. So with the creative genius of Yusuf, who is seen here depicted as a 1940s painter, <laughs> um, we started designing, we started thinking, we started sourcing sustainable materials. But to us, the mission was clear. We were going to make British university fashion cool. The apparel was born. Now, this idea that was abstract and bound only in our heads and bounced off in cafes became a reality. It manifested in a range of products that we brought out to market. And soon we found ourselves becoming our own marketeers, our own accountants, our own publicists, our own lawyers, and even sourcing our own materials from overseas. And I even had to practice uh, climbing, climbing step ladders, which was thoroughly enjoyable. This was when Daniel was taking pictures of our, of our products early on. So what else did we do? We ran socially distanced events where legislation permitted. In a world that was working from home, we switched our focus to online and to e-commerce. Our business developed and grew in ways that it never otherwise would have 
if it wasn't for these imperfect, uh, imperfect circumstances. And this nimbleness and agility manifested in different ways, even actually in the ways that we transported the box itself, or at least one of its distant cousins. And things were going suspiciously well at this point. You know, despite the imperfect circumstances, we had built a brand that we believed in, that, that represented our values. They also, we also fortified a very strong e-commerce platform and we'd expanded across the United Kingdom. So things were going all right. Uh, and then, and then this happened. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine uh, fire engines, a lot of sirens, <laughs> yeah. general pandemonium. Yeah, terrible, a, a few tears. Yeah. It literally all went up in flames. <laughs> literally. A freak accident in the, in the warehouse next to us that definitely wasn't to do with insurance uh, or arson. Um, led to an enormous inferno that absolutely barbecued our entire business. <laughs> Now, Yusuf and I, as two at the time future trainee lawyers, and now as trainee lawyers, you would have expected us to have taken out insurance against fire risk. But actually, we had forgotten uh, to, <laughs> to do that, and uh, our business was barbecued. Um, so, what did we do next? Over a very somber cup of coffee, we asked ourselves the question, should we pack it in? Should we give up? Should we throw in the towel? Should we pack it in? And this was probably our lowest moment but it certainly wasn't the first time that we'd asked ourselves this question, should we pack it in? And it definitely hasn't been the last. No, we, we asked ourselves, should we pack it in a few times throughout our journey? We asked ourselves, for example, should we pack it in? When I accidentally crashed the entire website during a sale and decided to go off for lunch. Uh, we also asked ourselves, should we pack it in? When Daniel decided to shift our stock using the only logistics company in the whole of America to go bankrupt during the, the, the pandemic. But I think my, my favorite instance of where we asked ourselves that fateful question, should we pack it in, was with our limited edition colorway release. So what this was, was for part of our product range to release brand new, vibrant, bright colors. We're talking pinks, yellows, oranges, the lot. We were super excited about this. You know, we had arranged a marketing campaign. We'd bashed our heads together on this. We'd sorted a photo shoot. Um, and as ever, we were going to run this photo shoot with models, etc., cetera, um, and on film, because film, you know, there's a vintage look and it's in, in keeping with our brand. But one of the things about a film shoot um, is that it takes a couple of weeks for photos to be processed and come back to you. And normally this is a fantastic thing because the anticipation grows. We can't wait to see how they come out. We're really excited, get these bright colors out. Uh, and they came back and all the film had been in black and white. <laughs> for these brand new colors. Now, the, this imperfect notion that we spoke about in the beginning, we learn the hard way, is not something that just extends to the beginning or the start of any enterprise or any venture that you intend on carrying out. This imperfect notion extends throughout your business journey or throughout any project that you intend on doing. Now, we believe that the myths around business need to be demystified. Indeed. So, and one of the most important things we learned about the imperfect on our journey was that actually therein lies the greatest value and the greatest resilience to be drawn. It's not necessarily in the good times where everything's going well. It's when you're asking yourself, should we pack it in? Because every single time so far that we've asked ourselves that question, it's been followed by, no, let's not pack it in. And therein lies great resilience, um, and, and, but not only as a business, but also as people to carry on in the face of adversity. Now, a very, very intelligent guy called Abraham Wald, who came up with this theory behind us, thought about the notion of something called survivorship bias. Now, we're all guilty of it, and, and it's the idea of looking only at the winners, at the champions, at those who made it. And this is something we're all guilty of. Now, during World War II, the US Air Force needed to fortify and armor the plane a bit more. They couldn't armor the whole plane, otherwise it might be too heavy to fly. 
So what they did do is analyze all the planes that returned from battle and analyzed all the parts that were shot at the most. Now, intuitively, when you look at that data set, you would think you'd armor the bits that were shot at the most. Now, Abraham Wald, who came up with the theory, thought, nah, that's, that's an awful idea because these were the planes that survived to be part of the data set at the beginning. What you actually need to look at are the bits that aren't shot at because they're the planes that never made it back. Now, this idea of survivorship theory essentially says you're looking at the wrong bits most of the time. You're looking at the wrong bits. We believe that this idea manifests itself in business as well. So we're looking at the wrong bits. I think today in the age of social media, you're bombarded by the perfect. You can be an entrepreneur or start something and it'll be easy. You won't have to ask yourself the question, should we pack it in? But I think what we hope to impart today is that it's, it's more important to look at the imperfect and the struggle and therein lies great resilience. Now, I'm not gonna stand here and neither of us are gonna stand here and say this imperfect journey isn't without some really, really perfect moments. We made more revenue in our first year of trading than Nike did in their first year of trading. We've expanded across the whole country with an intention of expanding our range even further. We also actually took out some insurance uh, against fires uh, this time. And we met heroes such as Peter, Peter Andre on, on one of our, along one the way. Of our, so it can't, it can't all be bad. Which was an incredible highlight for us. So where does that leave us? I think we have to come back to our humble brown cardboard friend, the, the box. Yes, it still represents some of those ideas that you guys may have had that could have become a reality and didn't. And hopefully today we've given you a little insight uh, into our little idea that did become a reality. But also we think it can become a representative of the ideas that you guys will have tomorrow that may be able to become a reality. But what we would say is that won't be without struggle. That won't be out without strife. You may even use the words, should we pack it in? But what we would suggest is that you embrace the imperfect. Thank you.